Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Peachtree's inventory features track the goods and services that your company purchases and sells to others. As you make inventory related transactions, Peachtree posts the information to the general ledger and adjusts the quantities and costs of goods accordingly. The first step in the process is to add the items that you will need to track into Peachtree. As you add items, you can change the default information that you set up in the inventory item defaults as needed. To add inventory items, just select Maintain from the menu bar and then choose the Inventory Items command to view the Maintain Inventory Items screen. Notice that there are five tabs into which you enter information within this window. General, Custom Fields, History, Bill of Materials, and Item Attributes. When creating inventory items, you begin by assigning the item an item ID. Then enter a short description for the item into the description field. Next, select an item class from the item class drop-down list. Every item you create will fall into one of the classes defined. Item classes define the type of item that you are creating and determine how an item's costing information is recorded. Once you save an item as a class, you cannot change the item class. Now the different classes of items that we can set up are stock items, and you use this class to track your traditional inventory items. It tracks the quantity, average cost, vendors, stock reorder point, and quantity on hand. You also have the master stock item, and this is a special class of stock item that contains attribute information about several types of substock items contained within it. You can go here to maintain the substock items, as you cannot directly change the substock items that are created. You can also create non stock items, and you use this item class for items that you sell but don't track as inventory. So Peachtree doesn't track the quantity on hand for these items. There is no associated costing method. Description only is just used for line item comments within an invoice. Nothing is tracked. For the service class, you use this class to represent services you apply to your salary and wage account. So this is useful for services provided by your employees, and you can enter a cost for the service. Labor is also used to represent labor that you apply to your salary and wage account. So this is useful for labor provided by subcontractors, and you can enter a cost for the labor. You also have the assembly class, and you use this to represent items in your inventory that can be assembled or disassembled from other stock items in your inventory. You also have the activity item in Peachtree Complete or Higher, and you use this item class to indicate how time is spent when performing services for a customer. This class is used in employee and vendor time tickets when you plan on billing customers for activities performed by employees or subcontractors. You also have charge items, once again in Peachtree Complete or Higher. And you use this item class to identify reimbursable charges that are incurred when performing services for a customer. This class of item is used in the employee and vendor time tickets when you plan on billing customers for reimbursable expenses. Now if we take a look at a standard item or a stock item, notice that when you're creating the item on the general tab you enter in the specific information for the item. Now once again depending on the class of inventory item Note that some fields may not be available on the General tab. You also enter in the beginning balances on this tab as well. Now in the Description field, note that you can choose either for sales or for purchases from the drop-down. You can enter two descriptions per item, one that appears in your Sales Forms and one which appears in your Purchase Forms. You would then enter the price into the associated price field. For your stock and assembly items, you can enter in the last unit cost into the next last unit cost field. Now, once you've 
entered a transaction or a beginning balance for this item. This field will be updated by Peachtree. Also, select one of the three available costing methods from the drop-down list of choices. You can choose FIFO, LIFO, or AVERAGE. Note that the costing method cannot be changed after the item has been saved. It will also only be available for stock and assembly items. You can then continue by entering in the UPC or SKU for the item. Then select an item type of your choosing. This is used as a filter in reports. You can enter a description of the item's physical location into the location field if desired. Then enter in how the item is sold using the stocking or units of measure field. This is optional as it's not used in calculations. You can also enter in a weight for the item. Weight totals can actually be printed on reports, providing that you use the same unit of measurement for each item. Now next enter in the income account that will be credited when the item is sold in the general ledger sales account. Then enter the inventory account that will be debited when the item is bought and credited when it's sold into the general ledger inventory account field. You then enter the expense account that will be credited when a non-stock item is sold into the general ledger salary slash wages account field. Now this account will be reduced and the cost of sales account will be increased when a non-stock item is sold. You can enter the cost of goods account that will be debited when the item is sold into the general ledger cost of sales account field. Finally, you assign the item an item tax code. Next, you can enter in the minimum stock number into the field of the same name. This is the quantity at which you will reorder the stock for the stock item item class. Notice that once again it's used only for stock and assembly items only. You can also then enter in the reorder quantity, which is the number of items usually purchased when the minimum stock level is reached. You can also specify the preferred vendor for this item by using the preferred vendor ID box. If you have a buyer, you can specify the employee ID of the buyer by using the buyer ID field. When you're ready to enter beginning balances for your items, assuming that you are setting up your company, you will click the beginning balances arrow, and we can discuss this later. For now, congratulations on getting through the general tab. Next, you would click the custom fields tab, and here you will enter in any information for this item into the fields that you decided to set up when you set the values in the inventory item defaults window. You can then click the history tab. Now you can't make changes to this window, but it does show useful information. It will display the period history date, and for that date the number of units sold, dollar sales, number of units received, and the total cost for the selected item. Now for the assembly item classes, you can click the Bill of Materials tab. Note that this tab only appears when the item class is set to assembly. Now if the item that you are entering is not of the assembly class, then you simply skip this tab. An assembly item class is a group of products which you sell as a single unit. So to create an assembly item, you must select the required component items and enter the quantities needed of each on the Bill of Materials tab. If you want the items that make up an assembly to print as separate line items in invoices, then click the Print Components on Invoice checkbox. Then select the item ID of the first item used in the assembly from the item ID column. You can use any stock, non-stock, description, assembly, labor, or service item that you've already created. Next, you would enter a short description for the item into the description field. Next, you would simply type in the quantity needed of the item in order to build the assembly. Note that you can also use the Add and Remove button 
on the right side of this tab to add and remove item components for an assembly. Make sure that you do enter in all of the items needed for the assembly. Now if you're using a master stock item, in that case you would then click the item attributes tab. Now on this tab you set the primary attributes and the secondary attributes for the master stock item. These attributes could include things such as size, style, and color for example. Now as you set the attributes, Peachtree will automatically create substock items of every possible combination between your primary attributes and your secondary attributes. Now under the primary attributes section, you simply enter the name of the primary attribute that you've set. Then give the first specific instance of the set an ID code by typing it into the ID field. Then type the description for the specific instance into the description field, and then click the Add button to add that attribute to the list of primary attributes. You can also select an attribute in this list and click the Remove button to remove it. You then repeat the process till you've added the attributes that are needed. Then under the Secondary Attributes section, enter the name of the secondary attribute to set. Then give the first specific instance of the set an ID code by typing it into the ID field. Then type the description for the specific instance into the description field. Then click the Add button to add the attribute into the list of secondary attributes. You can also select an attribute within this list and click the Remove button to remove it. Now once you save a master stock item, Peachtree will then generate every possible combination of primary and secondary attributes as separate stock items, which are called substock. These will display in the Created Substock Items list. The item ID of the substock is the combination of the ID code for the master stock item, plus the ID codes of the primary and secondary attributes. Note that you cannot delete a substock item without removing its attribute ID, but that you can check the inactive checkbox for any created substock item in order to inactivate it if you don't sell that particular style. Now make sure that you click the Save button when you're done entering any new item information to save it. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.